So here we have a PS5 that was brought in by a customer. It's gone to the white light, but we don't have a display. I'm gonna remove the HDMI port. It's, it's solidly in there, so the claspers and stuff is still intact. We get a nice click when we take it out. You have like a small scratch just above the port, but the port itself is in okay condition. Like there's no broken pins, the port's not bent, nothing like that. And we get jobs like this all the time. Where there is actually no physical damage to the outside of the port on the PlayStation. It all seems to be on the inside. I bet that's what this job is. When I take this PlayStation apart, I bet the pins on the other side of the port that are connected to the motherboard have just come away from the pads. Yes, you could argue that maybe it might be a little bit of excessive force from the user, but as I've stated in previous videos, the Xboxes that I get in the Series S and the Series X never have that issue. Factory soldering on those ports is really, really good. It's always user damage when it comes to the Xboxes. And you can see the damage externally. I guess another addition to my little mini rant that's going on. You can see, look at the size of that dry spot on the APU. It's quite big, it's, you know, it's almost half the size. Doesn't have any liquid metal on. Exactly same on the cooler as well. And I can confirm that this PS5 hasn't been opened before. I've brought the board over to the microscope so we can now take a look at the actual pins that are on the board. Just a disclaimer, I haven't looked at these just yet. So I could be setting myself up. A failure here in my rantings. How are we looking? Yeah, I mean, look, it's just not, they're just not soldered. The state that this comes out of the factory is just silly, in my opinion. Now, these pins do look like that you can see how loose they are, right? So obviously the port's not going to work. And it is entirely possible that maybe these have been pushed back, the plastic itself. But when I look at the actual port itself, let me show you under the scope. This is the plastic bit, the inside of that port. This is not wobbly. Like this is still really, really secure. And as you can see, we just don't have any visible damage. I guess my moaning is rather about just the state of the factory soldering. Like it just shouldn't be breaking this easy. And like I said, the amount of people that just, they come in and they say, my PlayStation 5 has just stopped displaying. We just don't have the same experience with the Xboxes. And this has been happening since I started in September. And even before then with the shop itself, the only we're saying we, we, we get so many PS5s. Let's get the ball off. I doubt there will actually be any trace damage. So it should be quite a nice, easy, replacement fresh off the press removed the solder from the ground hose as well using my solder sucker come in with our flux soldering iron and just wick away what we have here as always a nice clean as we go so many different techniques to be able to change out hdmi port by the way my preferred method like i said is by using a solder sucker on the ground legs to clear those out. You can use a soldering iron with hot air. Just trying to clear the ground legs out with a soldering iron, unless you've got a top, top, top of the range. I don't think is necessarily doable. I failed doing it a bunch of times, which is why I opt to use just the hot air and the solder sucker. But again, someone else might have the routine down. Be interested to, uh, to see. Now that we've got everything clear, we literally just fill everything up with a bunch of leaded solder. To come with our flux, plenty of flux. And I just like to leave big blobs on top. And the reason why I'm leaving these big blobs on top is because when I heat the board, I like to use a heat and drop method. These blobs will flow through and wrap themselves around the port itself. I think this solder's actually gone all the way through, so that's good. Looking sweet. Gonna keep that same flux on there because there's plenty of it and it doesn't look burnt. You can tin the port. I don't personally, because I go over the pins afterwards anyway, just to make sure that we have that solid connection. Fume extractor on for this because it does generate quite a lot of smoke. Always use my fume extractor when soldering. There we go. You can see the solder now dropping through the board on the ground legs see that nice now what we're going to do is come in with a port drop it in at that point i just use my fingers and thumb because of the fact the port itself is not as hot as what i'm heating the area up is i then actually push the port back as much as i can just to ensure that we have it secured as much as possible and then again just hold the heat make sure that solder wraps around the legs of the port and then finally, just a gentle push on the top. Keep it held down until I can see the solder solidify on the legs. 
which is now. Now we apply some flux whilst the board is still hot. And just go over those pins one by one to ensure that they are all connected properly. So we might have a bridge, too hard to say just yet. Yeah, I think I can see a little bridge in the middle. Yeah, I can. But at this point, I'd like to just check the work that I've done. How are all the other pins looking? Yeah, all of those look solid. And let's see if I was right about the legs. Yeah, you see how that solder is hugging the legs. It's going to be it both front and back. It's going to be a very secure port. Still have the tiny cap there. So you just sort that little bridge out just there. Tiny bit of flux coming with the iron. If this doesn't clear it, we'll just use some uh, solder wick. We might have just got it. Yes, we did. So bridge is gone now. We don't want anyone to know that we've been here. And if we just confirm how solid these pins are, just by giving them a little nudge, none of them moving at all. These are all solid. which is exactly what we want. There we go. And last but not least, we always sort out the back of the port. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of flux and these solder blobs are a bit too much. I don't now have to come in with my iron and hold it here for ages to ensure that these go through to the other side because we know solder has already gone through to the other side and it's hugging the legs. So all that leaves me to do is simply just tidy up to make it look a little bit better and clear the flux that we have. So first I like to just melt the flux with my heat gun. This does make for more work because what I could do theoretically is just apply flux and go over the joints and then clean up, but this, this flux is now relatively old and burnt. So I'd like to get some fresh flux on here. Just a preference thing, I think. Essentially, you could say that I was just doubling my work, but quality over quantity. There we go. Lovely jubbly. And again, whilst the flux is fresh, come in with our cotton bud, just clean up. A lot of people always ask like, how did I actually get into this? i done exactly what you're doing, which is just watch people on YouTube. I didn't pay for any courses. I didn't really have any like mentors or anything other than the people that I was watching on YouTube. I don't want to try and list them all because I'll definitely forget somebody. Looking smart. Now I'm going to give this a test and make sure that it works because wouldn't that be embarrassing? All right, here we go. Fully reassembled. Let's see if it works. Blue light. Waiting for that to go to a white light and then hopefully get a display on the screen. I have faith. There we go. Straight away. Nice. And that, as always, is going to be another happy customer. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.